Good question. This is an interesting question you're asking because on Monday when I had travel issues and I joined you guys on the phone, I came in hot with the why is he playing? Mm -hmm. I said I don't understand why they're why he's playing and why the Clippers are allowing him to play. So when the news broke yesterday and Woj broke the news, I thought he pulled himself out. But then I heard Grant Hill, who's the managing director of Team USA, say this about Team USA pivoting away from Kawhi. We just we just felt that we had to pivot and uh, not to get into the particulars, um, you know, in terms of what went into the decision. But, um, you know, we just felt it was in our best interest, but also in the Clippers and in Kawhi's best interest to uh, to move into a different direction. And, uh, you know, we tried, you know, I think we all tried and we gave it, you know, a valiant effort. And, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we have to move forward. Okay. I don't know the answer to the question now that you asked. Did he pull out or did they pull him out? What What do you think the answer is? I think they pulled him out. There was clearly a ramp-up period, and Kawhi was on the fence a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, listening to it in the last few days, it sounded as if he was optimistic that he was going to give it a go out in Paris. But the powers that be, I mean, Ty Lu, who is his head coach and an assistant coach on Team USA with Steve Kerr, you know, he's monitoring the situation, and they, they all felt like, this wasn't going to be in Kawhi Leonard's best interest to do this. And that's that's really where the disappointment is. It's not for Team USA, because Team USA is going to be fine. Like they, they are the overwhelming favorites to win the gold medal. I mean, we saw what happened against a team that had the second shortest odds to medal, which is Team Canada yesterday, and they smoked them. What was it, 86 to 72? So it, exactly. it's, not, it's not as if there's going to be a lot of intrigue from an on-court perspective on whether or not Team USA is going to get the gold medal. But for Kawhi Leonard having that opportunity to represent his country in an Olympics, it feels like one of those once-in-a-lifetime experiences that he's going to miss out on. And and I guess for somebody that is so decorated and that's won championships and finals MVPs with two different franchises, for him to not have the opportunity to represent his country when he really wanted to, it, it, it sucks for him. As a former athlete, I can tell you that sucks that his body is betraying him. Well, he won't have that opportunity to achieve something that is genuinely a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Yes, that he clearly wanted to do, which is why he's there. When he showed up wearing that sleeve on his right leg, I know that his availability was in question, but then he participated in training camp, so it felt like he was going to be a part of this. But when Grant Hill makes the comment saying, we are doing what's in the best interest for the team. For Kawhi, we've been working with the Clippers. That leads me to believe that this decision was taken out of Kawhi's hands. Maybe he ultimately relented and said, yes, this is probably what's best for all parties involved. But him being there and him trying to participate, it shows you how much he wanted to be a part of this and represent his country. But if I'm the Clippers, why would I want Kawhi, who's trying to get healthy, to put himself in this type of competitive environment when it's probably not in my best interest? This is the single best decision made this entire offseason. It's a better decision than Paul George by the Sixers. It's a better decision... But then DeMar DeRozan to the Kings. The Clippers taking him out of this is the best decision made this entire offseason. You have handed him your franchise. And you're going to let him play on someone else's dime? I understand it's for the United States of America. Breaking news. They don't need him. He's great. They don't they need don't him. They don't need him. <laughs> they don't need him. The Clippers <laughs> need him. And they're paying him $50 million a year. A number they would not pay to Paul George with a no-trade clause, as Paul George asked for. So when you're paying somebody $50 million a year, it was a horrible decision to even let them show up to Vegas for the practices. They sh they could have had a man-to-man -man conversation, Ty Lue and Kawhi, simply saying, Kawhi, you missed, what, 12 of the last 14 games? You were hurt. I understand how badly you want to represent your country. You need to represent the Clippers first. They pay your salary. You cannot come here. Get healthy. Be ready game one. And now he's out, which is the right thing to do for all parties involved. I can't believe it took this long. Yeah, but the chronic injuries from Kawhi Leonard in this latest episode, which is keeping him out of the Olympics, only highlights how bad the L.A. Clippers managed the Paul George negotiations. That may be true That also. is awful. Like, you, you realize that Kawhi Leonard is not going to be dependable. I mean, the guy paid in, what, 50-some regular season games? That's all he got. I mean, when it came to the playoffs, he, he was out there for a couple of games before they shut him down, but even then he was a shell of himself. So what are you going to do when Kawhi Leonard inevitably is out of the lineup for weeks on end during the regular season or, God forbid, in the postseason with no Paul George? 
It's going to be the James Harden show? How the hell you think that's going to work out? I, I, I don't understand what the L.A. Clippers were thinking when they didn't offer Paul George the exact same contract that Kawhi Leonard got immediately after the ink was dry on Kawhi's contract. Kawhi, Clippers, Kawhi. <laughs> Kawhi, would you do that? I don't understand it. It makes no sense. It's absolutely abysmal how they've handled it. And I wanted to say that this was a competent franchise with them initially drawing a line in the sand on max years. They didn't want to give them the fourth year. They didn't want to give them max money. I thought it was the right thing to do in trying to leverage the locale, knowing that Paul George is from L.A. I thought it was the right way to handle it. But after hearing what PG said on the podcast about how it all went down, it absolutely makes no sense. I thought he was being greedy. He wasn't. He just wanted the same respect, the same runway that the franchise had offered Kawhi Leonard after he had Paul George being one of his best seasons, one of his most efficient seasons in which he played in 74 games. It makes no sense how the L.A. Clippers bungled the Paul George negotiations and opened the door for him to join the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, I think they should trade him at some point here. I think Why? It's, oh, God, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, it makes no sense. What are you going to gonna get from him? What, what, like, like, From him or for him? From him. Yeah, well, I What are I you going to get from him? I don't know, but I mean, like. The Clippers, as constituted, is not a championship contending team. No, no, no. And in best case scenario, Kawhi Leonard is going to play in 60 games. Best case scenario. Best case scenario in the regular season. Well, And you hope that he's available in the postseason. Three to three. Playoffs in a row, he's left early because of injury. Exactly. So I, I guess w without having a, a, a co-star the caliber of Paul George, you're not getting through the Western Conference with teams like Minnesota, Dallas, OKC, Denver. You're not getting through that juggernaut. It's just not going to happen for you. So I just don't understand to what end th th that, that hard line approach was supposed to, to be with Paul George. I, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. And it's only highlighted by this latest – injury scare with Kawhi Leonard. I, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, Team USA, the team that he left, did win in an exhibition last night over Canada, 86-72. Anthony Edwards was the leading scorer with 13 points off the bench. Who was that? Ant-Man. Oh, okay. Ant-Man and Number Team USA <laughs> impressed in their tune-up game yesterday against Canada. He was talented. He is talented, and he was the man yesterday. 9 of 10 hiring.